शिपिंग एवं मैरिटाइम इंडस्ट्री को बढ़ावा हेतु प्रदर्शनी का आयोजन आई एन इंडिया एक्सपो दो हजार मुंबई के गोरेगांव स्थित बॉम्बे एग्जीबिशन सेंटर में शिपिंग एवं मैरिटाइम इंडस्ट्री को बढ़ावा देने हेतु इन्फॉर्मा मार्केट्स के तेरह संस्करण की प्रदर्शनी का भव्य आयोजन 4 से 6 अक्टूबर 2023 के बीच किया गया है ये प्रदर्शनी इन्फॉर्मा मार्केट्स ने आई एन इंडिया के सहयोग से आयोजित किया है इस कार्यक्रम में मुख्य अतिथि के रूप में आई अधिकारी श्याम जगरनाथ डायरेक्टर जनरल शिपिंग डॉक्टर मालिनी वी शंकर वाइस चांसलर इंडियन मैरीटाइम यूनिवर्सिटी उपस्थित थी इस संबंध में पत्रकारों से बातचीत में उपस्थित अतिथियों ने कई अहम मुद्दों पर जानकारी प्रेस के साथ साझा किया बाइट सिटिंग नेक्स्ट टू मी यू विल ऑल्सो गिव इज बाइट्स इफ इंडिया इज टू यू नो 
reach as our target is the $5 trillion GDP within the next just couple of years, I think Maritime has a lot to contribute. And INMEX, we have always been looking at the technology and innovation. That is our focus. So I think in today's world, with the digitalization taking place, with the, everything, AI, robotics, and everything else, I think that is the that is the you know order of the day. Unless you adapt yourself, obviously you will be getting totally left out. And of course, in uh, India, we are also extremely proud of our seafarers. Uh, seafarers of India are, uh, I mean, are treated as second to none in the world. We are one of the largest seafaring supplying nations in the world. But having said that. You know, Philippines is possibly the largest, but look at Indian population, look at Philippines population. We have 1.42 million billion population, which is about 18% of the world. But in seafaring, our seafarers compo I mean, uh, comprise of just about 9% or thereabout. Of course, Government of India's target is to take it to 20%. There is tremendous, tremendous potential because we have the age on our side. Demography-wise, India is one of the youngest countries in the world, and we have the English-speaking population, which is absolutely vital for seafaring. So we have all the potential. We have, you know, uh, so many training institutes. We are one of the largest uh, seafaring training countries also in the world. So that we have tremendous potential. Unfortunately, we don't have a really, really strong shipbuilding side because. We barely contribute 0.5% of the world's shipbuilding tonnage today. But again, because of our engineering prowess, because of our talents, there is the tremendous potential. So I hope there also we move up. As it is, we are one of the largest ship recycling nations in the world, along with Bangladesh, Pakistan. Here again, we are you know moving up the technology. We are becoming more and more environmentally friendly, which is the order of the day. So I think uh, our potential is huge in ports, in shipbuilding, in shipping, everywhere. Because after all, unfortunately, the Indian shipbuilding tonnage has not kept pace with the growth in the India's existing trade. So there have to be more facilitative measures. I hope all these things happen. And I hope we as the platform for knowledge sharing, expert experience sharing, we can serve the maritime industry by having this Inmex SMM going forward in even larger scale. And I hope everyone really you know, benefits from that. Our one grievance against the media has always been that you know, shipping industry gets only projected through a very time accident and things like that. The tremendous contribution of shipping is not really brought out by our friends in the media. So my appeal to you as one of the ambassadors of this industry Please do your best to project shipping in a positive spin, not in a negative spin. Thank you very much. Well, thank you not so much, Jed. There were wonderful words. Um, I mean, more than 80% of uh, the world traffic, um, cargo traffic, is done by, by shipping. Uh, it's such a vital uh, role for the global economy. And um, we, as co organizers of this show here, I'm representing the Hamburg Messe and Congress in Hamburg, Germany. Um, we believe very much in the growth of the Indian market. And next year, from 3rd to 6th September 2024, there will be SMM Hamburg again. Uh, by far the most international exhibition and conference for the maritime industry with more than 2,000 exhibitors and 40,000 participants from uh, 125 nations. I call it uh, also the United Nations of Shipbuilding, and we will definitely try everything to give India an even stronger platform, because India will become more and more important through its population, through its education, the language, and also you, India is a reliable uh, democracy. So I think in the global supply chain, India will play a much stronger role in the future than of today. Thank you. Industry is knowledge industry. So for your progress and growth, you require sharing of knowledge and expertise. So conferences actually help in sharing of knowledge and expertise. I must uh, admit humbly that uh, these private conferences, they are not like you know Global Maritime India Summit, 
where there are MOUs signed and you can calculate in terms of billion dollars how much is you know business being uh, generated exactly from that. I don't think the you know private uh, conferences and uh, you know uh, exhibitions can really you know make such such claims that we have uh, you know given rise to so much of additional business. But after all, these conferences mainly serve to you know provide a platform for knowledge sharing and experience sharing. So in that sense, as I said, every industry today, including maritime industry, is a knowledge industry. So in that sense, it has, in my opinion, it has a huge role to play. Adding on to what Mr. Hasra just said, uh, INMEX and the SSM, SMM uh, conference is very opportunately placed considering the Global Maritime India Summit 2023, which is going to take place in a couple of weeks in this month itself. So bringing the stakeholders together and using this platform will be, I think, a stepping stone for the Global Maritime India uh, Summit 2023, which uh, the Government of India is taking up. And also, there is a lot of need for such platforms because the Indian maritime industry is still not very well publicized. We need the industry to be taken to every corner of India considering that we've got 7,500 long kilometers of long uh, coastline. But the Indian shipping industry has to grow and the Indian shipping industry does not mean only the ship owners. The industry is an integrated lot of everybody who is a stakeholder in the industry. So these type of platforms help to bring the maritime industry into the focus, which is the need of the hour considering that 90% of the cargo by volume and 75% by value is actually traded through shipping. So shipping needs to be focused and these platforms are very important for that. India government जो है और काफी promote कर रही है कारगो को जो shipping से अपने देश से माल बाहर जाने के लिए ऐसे में maritime industry का जो है और नए technology से कितना आगे improvement होगा उसके बाद With respect to the technology, the entire maritime industry globally is guided by IMO. The IMO defines what are going to be the technological bandwidths and the standards. And India is progressing very well with respect to the IMO guidelines. And technology is today a partner with the maritime industry to be able to communicate, to be able to do business more efficiently. There is a lot of technology which is there in the industry and it is only going to grow. Mr. I just wanted to ask you, you just spoke about more facilitative measures required to promote Indian talent. Now it's a shame that India doesn't have the tonnage that it is required. You have been talking about more facilitative, more facilitative measures right from 2005 when the tonnage tax was introduced. You said at that point of time that it would spur more investments into the sector. It hasn't happened. What more facilitative measures do you require? No, it is the same actually. It is, it is well known to you who have been covering the maritime industry for such a long time that unfortunately the tonnage tax was introduced but unfortunately in India only we have a situation where tonnage tax is possibly 10% of the total tax which is imposed on the shipping industry. In every, every other countries in the world where tonnage tax is there, the shipping industry is required to pay only and only tonnage tax. No other indirect or direct taxes are put on to shipping. Shipping is either zero, zero rated or waived from all such taxes. Whereas only in India we find a situation that tonnage tax, even after that being introduced, tonnage tax possibly for, uh, forms 10% of the total tax which the, any Indian shipping companies pay. Basically we, I mean, of course, this I don't want to, you know, elaborate too much on this. We have a situation where, you know, you should say that, okay, at least in your own backyard, you are the more pref most preferred lot. That is not the case even in India. Let us talk about, okay, let us talk about coastal shipping. In coastal shipping, what is the percentage of the cargo being carried by Indian national bottom? 
it's only about 40 percent and recently i would say in a way wrongly it was you know projected that cabotage is being relaxed now there is no cabotage law in india it is only a question of preference that was being given and it is a question of a no objection and DG shipping, you know, permitting and things like no, that. that even No, no, I am saying even that, that is being taken off. Also, no? Even that is being taken off. Whereas, if you go to USA, why, why only USA? If you go to so many other countries in the world, I always say, after all, shipping is a part of transport. Now, why greyhounds are not being allowed to run their buses more efficiently, more cost competitive wise on the Indian roads? You talk about the Indian, Indian, you know, you know, cabotage being relaxed, and in India you can carry containers from one port of India to other ports of India. Why aren't you allowing a uh, German, uh, you know, traveler who is coming from uh, Hamburg or coming from Frankfurt to Delhi? You don't allow him to travel to, uh, you know, uh, if he wants to go from Delhi to Mumbai, subsequently, you don't allow him to uh, go by any foreign carrier. It is only restricted to that. And as I keep on saying, you know, shipping is possibly the most akin to aviation. But there is a huge difference. In aviation, no other foreign carrier is allowed to bring a foreign aircraft into India unless the DGCA gives him, the Director General of Civil Aviation, gives him the so-called landing right. So it is, it is bilateral, it is restrictive. Whereas in shipping, there is absolutely no barrier. There is absolutely, you know, I mean, no, no permission which is needed for a foreign ship to come to India. As long as they comply with the technological standard provided by IMO, they can fly anywhere in the world. So obviously shipping being that way the most free industry, unless you provide, you know, unless you provide a so-called level playing field, which is unfortunately not there, how do you expect shipping to progress? And that's what is what has happened. Now, now they have recently set up this IFSC in Gujarat, Gig City. There is one ship that has already come. Why can't Indian owners explore that opportunity? No, no, they should, and they, they, I am sure they are going to explore. But this has, this has just come, and we have a special session. As a matter of fact, Vandana Agarwal herself will be there tomorrow. We have a special session. Those like Ripley and others in some different names who have who have got their you know tonnage registered with the IFSC, two or I think two or three organizations. One at the moment. No, I think there are two. But anyway, both of them are going to be there tomorrow. So IFSC is a very good effort. We welcome that, and we do hope that you know that uh, that spurs the growth in tonnage. But obviously, as I said. Unfortunately, as it stands today, there is very little level playing field for the Indian ship owners. And whatever India, India you know, comprises of only 1% of the world tonnage. Whereas our trade in terms of volume may be as much as 8 to 9%. Whereas in terms of the Indian tonnage, we are just barely 1%. And that is primarily, I would say, because of lack of facilitative measures. No, no. But I think we will not we will not confine this entire discussion no, no, only no, on no, that point. No, former company should at least explore that. No, I have a see, thing. I, I am I am not in a position have, to reply whether they are or not.